Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Forbes. I am host of the Lead with Giants community, which is a social media community that focuses on leadership, leadership development, and personal development. Uh, we have groups across LinkedIn, Google+, Facebook. Uh, we host a tweet chat on Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Been doing that about two and a half years. And, um, and now also conducting shows on Blab. Hello, David. Good to see you. Hey, Dan. Glad you made it in. So um, let's do, uh, well, let me just say what we're going to be, uh, talk a, uh, just a moment about what we're going to be doing today on this show. And then I'll ask Adam and David to introduce themselves. We do have another open seat. If there uh, is a coach in the room that would like to take a seat, feel free to do so. Or someone who is thinking about uh, becoming a coach. So the intent is uh, on the first and third Thursdays at noon uh, for us to gather together and have a, a coaching uh, mastermind. And so this is our first and today's topic is so you want to be a coach. And what I'd like to do in a moment, uh, Adam and David, if you would describe for us uh, when I ask you your journey into coaching and then I'll follow up. What do you love about coaching and what sometimes is frustrating uh, to you about coaching? And then um, maybe we can sort of come up with some questions. If someone came to you and said they, they're thinking about becoming a coach, what questions would you ask of them to help them think through that? And then I've got some other things about uh, maybe some skills needed for building a successful coaching practice and what would an action plan look like if someone was pursuing coaching? That sounds like an awful lot, so I don't know how far we'll get with that. Uh, Adam, take the mic, introduce yourself, and then David, if you'd follow Adam. Yeah, cool, thanks, Dan. Uh, let's see. I'm Adam Quiney, live in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I'm a, just trying to figure out the actual naming of this, I'm a, PCC, which is accredited by the International Coaching Federation. So I believe that makes me a professional certified coach. Absolutely. Uh, I was a former lawyer and in my current life, I have a coaching practice where I coach in executive leadership. And in addition to that, I also lead training for coaches. So I run a, uh, I'm part of a, an organization that runs a very rigorous, uh, times confronting coach training program that's a, a year-long stint. So we, we're always graduating new coaches and really believe in this profession and think it's an amazing career. And uh, I love this topic because I think we could benefit from more really powerful coaches out there. This technology is something to, to really share with the world. Absolutely. If we can raise that bar a little bit to help mm -hmm. um, you know, raise the bar of our profession, that's always yeah. a good thing. Hey, David, good to see you. Introduce yourself. Hi, Dan. Hi, Adam. I'm coach David J. Greer, and I'm based in Vancouver, Canada, not very far from where Adam is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been coaching for much of my career, um, although I don't know if I called it that, as I developed and challenged employees, uh, as I built my businesses. Um, I've had uh, my own coach for the last eight years, uh, Kevin Lawrence, coachkevin.com. And he has made a phenomenal difference in my life. And uh, so last year I decided that uh, I wanted to be able to give away some of the gifts that Kevin has given to me. And uh, like him, I uh, focus exclusively on entrepreneurs. Uh, so I'm an entrepreneurial coach. And I, I think that as entrepreneurs, um, well, we, we tend to have things a little worse or, or a little more than uh, the rest of the world. Um, because that's why we become entrepreneurs. And I also think as entrepreneurs that that kind of work life, there is no work life balance. There is called life. <laughs> and uh, We tend to just go to the max everywhere. And uh, I know I've had to work, do a lot of work with uh, Coach Kevin to just um, put everything in the right perspective. So um, and uh, this earlier this year, I launched my new book, Wind in Your Sales vital strategies that accelerate your entrepreneurial growth, uh, which is a book by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Uh, so you don't have to learn every lesson I learned the hard way. And I also feature the stories of 10 other entrepreneurs, 10 very successful uh, entrepreneurs. They all happen to be based here in British Columbia. 
Um, so again, they share their hard-won stories uh, so that uh, hopefully um, you as an entrepreneur don't have to learn all of them yourself from scratch. And most coaches are entrepreneurs. If they are external coaches, if they are building their own coaching business, that's for sure. I will say that my, uh, my coaching practice is Lead with Giants. Uh, the website is leadwithgiantscoaching.com. Uh, I've got a varied background. I was in the ministry, a pastor and a counselor uh, for about two decades. And as I think back to those counseling experiences, uh, they were an awful lot like coaching. I uh, went into the business world, uh, as some might say, to the dark side and into the real estate industry, became um, a realtor and then opened up my own uh, brokerage firm. Loved doing that. I uh, had a lot of fun doing that. And it was the first time that I hired a coach. And that was back in the late 1990s. And I thought that I would do that business forever. But the real estate crash of 2007 had some other things uh, in store for me. It wasn't fun anymore. I left that, joined Merrill Lynch, became a financial advisor. Because I had learned how to uh, grow a team as an entrepreneur and a, a business owner in real estate, I started doing that. Uh, at the brokerage firm in which I was working and really discovered that my passion was uh, developing in the area of coaching. And I wanted to do more and more of that. Uh, however, I was being told that um, eh, our compliance department doesn't really want you doing that. So you're going to have to make a decision. So I made a decision and uh, launched my coaching practice. I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, most of my clients are one on one clients, uh, the majority of them right now happen to be in the real estate industry because I speak that language. I know their challenges. And then I also coach coaches one-on-one uh, -on -one as well. So uh, again, Adam, David, thanks for being here. Uh, those are in the room. If anyone is a coach or thinking about becoming a coach and wants to take that other seat, uh, let's do so. So briefly, Adam, describe your journey from wherever you want to take it. I heard you say that you were, uh, you were an attorney. And mm -hmm. now, now you're a coach. Describe your journey into coaching and what was that like? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'll truncate the parts that are less boring and try to give the really the part that I think is is most transformative for me. I was a lawyer, an attorney, as you call it in the states, as you all call it. Y'all. And I, I, uh, I was good, but bored. And also life felt pretty much like shades of gray as opposed to the vibrant colors that I really wanted. Mm. And so I, I was looking at other careers and I met a coach who was a former lawyer. And that was kind of the first time I could even be open to this concept of coaching as a profession. I'll skip over the boring bits. Uh, what happened was I ended up in the training that I now lead, and I came down to this with a great deal of arrogance. Kind of had it in my head like, hey, I'm trained as an attorney, I've done this work, I, I'm a self-development junkie, I, I know all this stuff. You train these other fools and I'll kind of put in my wisdom and learn from osmosis. It's a little embarrassing to share this, but that's our work. And uh, one of the two masterful coaches that were leading that training said, you know, can we do some work with you, Adam? This is kind of how we want to introduce everyone. We want to do a little work. And I said, sure, thinking, you know, you got nothing on me. What are you going to pull forward? And what they said was, um, here's the thing. It's, Adam, you're like a new iPhone where it's, it's, you know, it's the package is great. It's handsome, charming, witty, well put together, articulate, professional. but like that new iPhone, we play with it and then we set it down and go have a beer with our friends because we can relate to them. And you just have zero ability to let anyone in. No ability for vulnerability, authenticity, intimacy. And as he was saying this, I, I wanted to put tape over his mouth, first of all. And well, that's euphemizing it, say the least. But I could see, it was like not even dominoes falling down, but just dominoes blowing up because I could see all the places in my life where this is true. And I was gobsmacked because it lay completely in my blind spot back here. I couldn't see any of this. And he finished by saying, look, you can take this package into the world of always being the smartest man in the room, always showing up and vulnerable. You'll be a great attorney. It's fantastic attorney skills. And you'll still be a leader because that's just part of who you are in the world, but you'll forever be a leader of followers. 
And if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to unlock this from the inside, because frankly, you're too slick, you can defeat us if you want, if you're willing to do that work, you could be a leader of leaders. And so that was the moment, that was the first moment I'd ever experienced really powerful coaching. And it was like a thunderbolt of awareness. And I decided like in that moment, I really knew this, this sort of level of transformational profound awareness, this is what I want to spend my life creating with other people and continuing to create in myself. Well, that was well, kind of the journey that got me into it. Love the story and nothing like uh, demonstrating that vulnerability in telling the story. Uh, oh, by the way, those are recorded, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, those, those in the room, uh, if you would tell a little bird over there on the left-hand side, sort of near the top, that lets your followers on Twitter know that we are uh, on air and blabbing together. And it's not working for me right now. Don't know why. Well, I guess it did. I guess it did. David, what is your journey into the coaching profession? Thanks, Bethany. Yeah, thanks, Adam, for sharing. Uh, and... Uh... Yeah, I mean, my journey is also one of, um, I think, self-discovery is, you know, I have 35 years as an entrepreneur, and I've spent most of that time developing technology companies, high tech. Um, that's my background. Since I was 14, I wanted to take computers and business and put them together. And I think, you know, over time, what I realized about myself, and I think, you know, understanding yourself is the key to becoming a good coach is that the people, people are what make me go. People and connections and helping people in their journey and whatever their path is. And it was really coming to that realization that that's what's most important to me and that's what I want to do. Uh, I've also had a lot of people who've helped me. I mentioned my coach, but there's been many others. Um, I have an overreaching vision for the work in my life and that's to help 100,000 entrepreneurs step into their single biggest challenge. Um, so some was coming to that realization, and, and I'm going to need help to figure that out. Uh, and then finally, um, my coach recommended that I take training with the Coach Training Institute, uh, CTI. And in the last year and a bit, uh, I did all five courses of CTI. I had unbelievably amazing, amazing coaches and amazing teachers. And, you know, I had and have a pretty big ego, thought I was a pretty great coach, and boy, did they <laughs> beat the crap out of me. <laughs> and uh, what I like about CTI is it's, uh, you know, a 10 or 20% theory, and all the rest is experiential. It's throw you out there, get you coaching, do it in a safe environment, and then, you know, come around and, and you know, give you a few quick kicks in the you know where to just really up your game and and really um, improve what you can bring to the world as a coach. And uh, so that that has been a very rewarding experience. And I've seen that showing up in my coaching work subsequently, uh, just a lot better ability to listen and let go of um, any prescriptive kind of solutions that I might have and, and be open to letting the client I mean, I might have a pretty good idea of what's likely to work, and I now I'm much better at letting the client make up their mind whether that's a path they want to pursue. Yeah, man, I I I love I love that approach. And uh, Adam, you and I have talked a lot about the difference between you know giving advice and 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 coaching someone. So, Adam, what do you love most about being a coach? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a spoiler because the thing I love the most about being a coach is also the thing I hate the most about being a coach, and that is that your job, I believe, your job as a coach is ultimately to have a great life. In as much as we have to be doing our work, we have to model our work. And you know, David, I love that you started by sharing that you've had a coach for eight years. Like to me, that's that's. Being a coach 101 is work with your own coach. So you're doing your work, you're modeling the work yourself. And so I love that as part of my career of choice, I'm constantly stepping beyond my comfort zone. I'm constantly leaning into what I'm afraid of. I'm constantly developing myself and creating myself and my life bigger than I thought was possible, you know, the week before, the year before. 
I also hate that because it means leaning into my fears. It means stepping out of my comfort zone. And those are uncomfortable things. And I'm not as graceful or as powerful or as whatever full as I necessarily like to be in that process of going from what I know to what I don't know. Yeah, David, how about you? What's uh, what's most satisfying or rewarding to you? Uh, what do you love about being a coach? Um, I'll share. I had a coaching client a month or so ago, and first time with this individual on the phone. Um, they had a topic. Um, you know, we we started down a path, and then I asked a question, and suddenly the voice at the other end went. I don't know if you could hear that, but it was a whispered yes. And mm -hmm. and all I said was, what? Your tone of voice completely changed. Like, what? what's going on? And this individual burst into tears. And, you know, uh, something that they hadn't realized how upset or how deep this problem and how much it meant to them. Um, they, they hadn't even really admitted it to themselves. And... Uh, we talked through it and, and we just spent some time just with, you know, how painful it was at that moment for this individual. And then I asked what they wanted to do about it. And then we, this individual was very attached to some parts of her business, which uh, were not doing that well. And, and I asked if uh, they needed to stay attached and they didn't. And, and we moved on to other ideas and they have since pursued those. And I think have had significant success. And I mean, we did all of this in an hour call. I, I, I just, I can't imagine other things I do in my life that can have that level of impact in 60 minutes. And, and it's really a blessing to be able to do that with people. We've got a comment over in the slide bar about uh, coaching and consulting. And they're uh, in, the, in the League of Giants community, there's a lot of coaches, a lot of consultants, a, a, lot, a lot of advisors. Uh, typically, a consultant is uh, might be called in, and and someone might describe the problem and just say, you know, help us. And the consultant can analyze, come up with a solution, uh, put together uh, the process or plan for that solution. Either leave it for the company to enact, or sometimes consultants themselves will stay on board and do that. And so uh, the statement is about the balance uh, for those who are consultants between coaching and consulting, and there's a place out there uh, for uh, someone to do both, to be able to use uh, the skills of a coach to help their client, but at the same time, perhaps use their, uh, their business experience, uh, for example, uh, their uh, analytical experience, their problem solving experience to actually come up with some, with some direction. Now mm -hmm. on this show, what we're focusing on uh, primarily is, uh, is simply coaching. So we're not going to go down, the path of consulting, but I, I, I did want to, to honor that honor that statement. Can I you know, put one I, thing in there too, Dan? Go ahead. Um, yeah. Just that, um, you know, in that comment, I hear almost like, well, you can't always be all one direction. And, and by, I mean, you said it already, like there is no prescription. And certainly, you know, as, as I talk about living outside of our comfort zone, that's not all that any coach would do. Certainly we we're working with people to generate the results that they want. That's a degree of certainty that they want to create. So it really is both. And, and rather than an either or, I think it's a both and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I'm being a consultant, then typically people want me to have the answers. If I'm being a coach, then my role is to have the questions. Right. People that, still that, want us to have the answers for them, though, I find. They uh, do. But it's really, <laughs> it, that, that's, how I, that's how I mentally try and figure out which hat I'm, I'm mm -hmm. wearing, right? Where, um, well, where, where do you see uh, the most results when you give them the answer, give them advice, or when you help them to discover their own path forward? I see it when they discover it for themselves. Certainly for the long term, it's when they discover it for themselves because they build their own resiliency and their own capabilities. Um, sometimes having the answers will get them to a short term um, goal that they want to reach, uh, but won't be sustainable. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, again, it, it's, it's where you're trying to go and how you're trying to help. 
Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I find nothing sticks like someone arriving at the conclusion themselves. For sure. And there are times when someone's just like, I mean, I even get to this point with my coach centers where I'm like, can you just tell me an answer? And, you know, so there, again, no prescription, right? Sometimes that's what people really need. And I think we're all in agreement here that really when people get to that answer themselves, that is magic. Absolutely. I, I love it when I hear silence on the other end of the phone line because I know something is happening uh, within the coachee. They're coming to an aha moment. Uh, they're discovering something for themselves. And sometimes some of the challenges I think that we have as, as coaches is to shut up. Let that silence hang there and let the person process and go through that discovery experience. Would you guys agree? Yeah, well, fortunately, I've spent a lot of time in sales and uh, had it beat into me that um, um, you ask the question and then you wait and you wait. Um, and uh, yeah, I, you know, and my CTI experience also got me better at that. And, uh, you know, you, you can ask a question. Sometimes on the phone, you know, you want to make sure you haven't lost them. So I might say, are you still there? Um, but uh, yes, letting them um have that space is one of the gifts i think we give as coaches and i, I also need to remind myself the biggest work in the client happens between the sessions mm -hmm. right I, I i silence was a big challenge for me i growing up learned to sounds like i have a bit of someone might something. need to mute if one of you guys are on speakers or something like that in any event, I, I'd grown up learning to fill silence with conversation as my way of ensuring people liked me and thought I was a good conversationalist. And I remember there was a point where my coach gave me a practice to just count to five in my head after any time someone stopped talking, Adam, count to five. And I, of course, hated her for that and practiced it. And counting to five took me about five weeks every time. It was just so awkward and uncomfortable, but to my amazement, Certainly in the coaching, it made a, a profound impact, but also out in the real world, suddenly right. conversations became much less exhausting. And what I was shocked to discover is when I stayed silent a little bit, people actually spoke themselves. And then we were in a dialogue as opposed to me doing a soliloquy. Right. Right. Yeah, been, but also, also, I had someone say to me recently, um, yeah, you know, the silence is not about you thinking about what you have to say next, right? It, it's really, <laughs> it's really learning that that you know meditative being fully present and just okay to just sit there and not. And for an action guy like me, this is such hard work. Mm -hmm. This is really, really hard work. Um, I want to fill the space. I want to create the noise and. That's all being part of my coach training and, and my personal growth is just letting go of that and getting much, much, much better. Yes, I think one of the most powerful skills that a coach can bring is simply being present with a client, not be thinking about what's the next thing you're going to say or what's the next question or where are we going, but just being in the moment with a client because in life, uh, that does not happen very often. And to me, that's one of the magical experiences about coaching, that when, as a coach, we're sitting with that client and we are listening and we are being 100% present with them, that's really a gift that we are giving to them so that they can express themselves and move into a direction that otherwise they probably would never discover if we were doing the majority of the talking. I see a couple of comments over there on the sidebar. If you practice uh, powerful questions ahead of the coaching sessions, it enables you to be fully present with a client. Um, there are coaches that do that, uh, that sort of maybe have a list of questions or a bank of questions. When I first started coaching, I thought, you know, that's a good idea. And, uh, I transition from that, that I don't bring questions uh, to the uh, uh, to the coaching session because then I, I find really that what I was doing, it was I was directing uh, the conversation. 
and it uh, it actually interfered with me being present with a client. Now, hopefully, I've stored questions in my brain that are you know some pretty good questions that at the given moment is going to come forward to help that client uh, move forward. So I, our top our topic today, and by the way, we've got an open seat if someone would like to join us. This is simply a uh, coaching mastermind here on Blab. We'll be doing this the second and third Thursdays of the month at noon. And um, so our topic is, so uh, you want to be a coach. So let's play here for a second. If someone comes to you and says, you know, I think I want to be a coach. What are some kinds of questions that we might ask that person to help open up their their thought process to uh, to get to a place that they they know that they want to become a coach? What's a couple of initial questions that you might ask? Uh, what does it mean to you to be a coach? Oh, I like that. What does it mean to you to be a coach? Sometimes when I when I tell people I'm a professional coach, they say, "Oh, what team?" <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm in yeah. Austin. I'm in Austin, Texas. We have a lot of sports here, and so when someone uses the word coach, it can mean so many things to different people. So I, I love that that question. Good. I, I like to go really childlike sometimes, and uh, I mean, this isn't a blockbuster question, but I like to ask why. How come? Mm -hmm. What? Tell me about like. Rather than me give them an answer or something, I want to draw it out from them. What is it in you that that has you want to be a coach? I really want to know more about. I want to know more of what is behind that statement or that question. I, I love uh, being in curiosity mm -hmm. uh, with someone and asking that question. Why is a uh, is a very powerful question, and it was exactly along the line that I I was thinking. You know, why is uh, being a coach uh, attractive, attractive to you. So um, what's another few questions that we might ask uh, to help that person, you know, think, well, I think more about that? In the sidebar here, I think it's Daniel. Um, who do you want to coach? I think that that's, uh, that's another great question. Um, another one I might do around resonance is, you know, you've just finished, a, you know, what, what do you want for your clients mm -hmm. out of, doing coaching with you. Yeah, and by the way, that's Chris. Uh, the first few letters there does remind you of Daniel's oh, yes. uh, Twitter, right. Twitter I, handle. I was guessing. I'm, that's okay. There's a limit to my right. ability with Twitter handles. Yeah. Um, a question that I would ask uh, would be, you know, what have you done already to explore the profession of coaching? Um, I would imagine that nowadays uh, what most people do is jump on the internet, right, and start doing an internet search, and you can get an awful lot of information uh, out there. There's a lot of uh, various kinds of coach training that's available. So I'd want to explore uh, with the individual, you know, what have you already done uh, to explore the profession of, of coaching? Adam? Yeah, I would, I would also be curious, like, I think, David, you had alluded to this or maybe even asked it directly, but I'd be curious to know what, uh, like, what it is that I'd really want to know, like, well, what is it that you feel is kind of missing or like what's the information that that you would have that would actually answer that question of whether or not you want to be a, a coach? Like, what is it that has you not sure so right. that we could kind of explore that together? And I would also be curious about what their understanding of being a coach is and what it means, because like you said, there's just such a plethora of coach training programs out there right now that being a coach, can it, it runs the full gamut of possibilities. I, I know when I was, uh, so uh, I had explained my background earlier. So master's uh, degree in divinity, stood in a pulpit for 20 years, and then counseling people. And I was trained more as a, uh, in a directive type of counseling, uh, which uses questions, but also basically give, gives advice to people. So that preaching, teaching, uh, directive counseling is, is some of that is useful, but now as a coach, I, uh, I'm just making space for people to walk into and, and, and to help them uh, and, and to help them move forward. So I would want to know what, um, you know, what is that, that picture of, of being a coach that you have in, in your mind already if you're thinking about being a coach? 
And then we hear terms like internal coaches and external coaches. So there are companies that have uh, employees within the company who get trained in coaching to help people in the company. They may be a part of HR, they may be a part of leadership development, or uh, they may be outside the company and have just uh, grown their own business. There's life coaches, there's executive coaches, there's um, entrepreneurial coaches. I mean, you can just put a lot of adjectives in, in front of that. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, I have to admit, I sometimes struggle uh, with that myself because I realize when I tell people that uh, if I simply say I'm a coach, I'm a professional coach, I'm an executive coach, most people really don't know uh, what that means. Now, uh, now I know, but uh, sometimes condensing that into, you know, we've all heard about elevator pitches, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, can, be, can, can be challenging. Uh, we were talking about, about training, all kinds of training. I did uh, uh, training with uh, Coach U, which is uh, done uh, with teleclasses. So you're in a class with another 10 or 12 people going through. Uh, their curriculum, it's about a six month uh, program, it's about the fastest that you can go through it. You can take 12 months to go through it. And then following that, I, I trained with the Center for Executive Coaching, uh, Andrew Knightlich, and really loved uh, uh, his material and his resources. I use a, a lot of that uh, with people. David, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned CTI. Uh, Adam, did you mention? Um, Accomplishment coaching was the, the program okay. I went through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people will say, well, you know, which one do you recommend? Uh, of course, uh, Adam, I know what you're going to recommend. Um, well, I, I would give a different, a slightly different answer, which okay. is like, I would recommend first, I would recommend whatever program resonates most for you. Sure. I mean, certainly I do have a bias. I think accomplishment coaching is a phenomenal coaching school, but I would recommend above all, a coaching school that has the coach doing their own work because mm -hmm. I really think that that is uh, a key aspect of it. So if it's just a program that just gives you a bunch of tools, I would, I would probably veer someone, I would suggest to them away from that and more to something that actually has them taking a look at themselves and really doing some of that deep inner work. That's going to forge a powerful coach. Right. I, I was actually surprised at the amount of personal growth that I had during the CTI. Um, mm -hmm training like it it really and there you know some of some of my co-students um dug out some deep stuff that i had no idea was there um really you know like if you if you wanted more reason to be a coach like just having that experience <laughs> uh, just gave me even more deeper meaning for why this work is so important mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if someone in the room has a question, you can hit forward slash Q and it will call out uh, the question, make it easy for us to see it. If you have a question, feel free to, to share one. I think we're just gonna take about, uh, about five more minutes. Um, I wanted to get to sort of that last question and that is if you were uh, helping someone think through creating an action plan uh, to move from where they are to becoming a coach, uh, what would need to be parts of that action plan? Now, let's not think like coaches here. Let's just talk about you know, what would what would a possible action plan look like? So, uh, Adam, what's 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 one thing? I would definitely have them uh, start working with a coach. And even you know, that's always a big step for people. I find it it's vulnerable. It's you know, there's a letting down of our ego. But I think if you're interested in being a coach, getting a direct experience of what it means to be coached is invaluable and it's it's just going to provide so much to that person. So that's the that's the number one thing I would have someone do is get into conversation with coaches and do some work with them. See what like see if you actually like that experience yourself. Mm, okay. All right. So we're thinking about an action plan. Um, what comes to your mind, uh, David? Uh, I think I would be curious about um, you know the kind of people that you want to coach mm. and and why you want to coach them uh, and then. You know, do you want to do this uh, within your organization or do you want to become an independent coach? Um, there can be rewards either way, um, but they're somewhat different paths. And then I saw this a lot in the people I took CTI with. Uh, you know, are you going to leave your job and, and uh, you know, 
put it all out there and this is going to become your livelihood, in which case, as Dan mentioned at the start of our conversation, you're also becoming an entrepreneur. And so you've got to have a business plan and you've got to do that. Or, you know, are you going to keep your day job and coach on the side for a while and build your practice that way? Um, you give yourself more flexibility. So, um, and, and my experience with different people is that it's an entire rainbow of choices. Like there's not, it's not to be a coach, do this, which of course for the three of us sitting here is good because you just coach the person um, with whatever works for them. Uh, but those were things I, I would be curious about. Okay. Um, I would suggest that someone interview uh, some coaches that they, that they admire or they respect and sort of use some of the questions that we've used here uh, to see, get an idea of, well, what's it like to be in the trenches? What is it really like? uh to be a coach and once you've once you've got that um at, at what point should someone uh start coaching even if it's pro bono to start experiencing what it's like love that you brought a should question <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, well I, i've got an answer um for me as soon as i realized and i don't know if this is the right answer to the should but as soon as i thought i think i might want to be a coach i put that out on facebook i told people hey i'm i think i'm actually interested in this as a profession if you're interested let's get into a conversation you know maybe we'll mess things up or muck around but you get to sort of learn a little bit more about what I'm up to and I get to practice something that I don't really know too much about. And I think one of the biggest hurdles coaches, new coaches often have is inviting people into a coaching conversation. And the sooner people start to get like to do the work to take on that hurdle, I think the sooner they start to move themselves towards turning pro. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I, I think it's, um, you, you get to a point and you get to it very early. You, you can start off with it by simply saying, I'm a coach. Yeah. And then start acting like one. So when I was going through my first coach training, I did a lot of uh, pro bono coaching. And that gave me tremendous uh, experience. And then part of the training, I had to record uh, coaching sessions and send it in for evaluation. And those were pro bono. And for someone who is thinking about accumulating hours toward a professional certification, as you had mentioned, Adam, through an organization like International Coaching Federation, uh, you can use those pro bono hours to count. Uh, you do have to have a certain number of paid coaching hours as well, but there's tremendous value. I also heard many people say that you really learn how to be, be a coach with your first 100 clients. Mm. The, yeah, my, my, my coach said to me when I said I wanted to be a coach, he said, um, you know nothing until you've coached 100 people. Right. <laughs> right. Well, let's the, see, guys. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, well, I was going to sort of start wrapping up. Go ahead, Adam, if you had a comment. Sure, I'm just going to add one more thing, which is um, you said, you know, when's the, the time to start asking, like taking on pro bono clients or coaching people pro bono? And I would almost say uh, just like, inviting people to a coaching conversation is a hurdle. The next hurdle I see people stumble with is actually making proposals, actually saying, hey, this is what I do, it costs this much money. So mm -hmm. uh, I actually, we often encourage people to start charging right out, right away, as opposed to continually taking on pro bono clients. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they don't give people an experience of coaching, they still do a complimentary or a sample session. But again, the sooner people start to actually practice putting themselves out there like this is something they do professionally, the sooner they actually take that on and start to be someone coaching professionally. Right. Uh, yeah, I, would, so I, would have, I would have done that, yet I was working with a financial institution that prohibited me from mm -hmm. having any, any outside yeah. income. So I did a pro bono, and lo and behold, I received some gift cards. Ooh. So, you know, Amazon gift cards worked. David? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I continue to, um, you know, my belief is most people haven't had a coaching experience, so they don't really know what it's like. So uh, I offer a free one hour of coaching um, to anyone that wants it. And, okay. uh, and, you know, I just ask they come with some wins, some successes from the previous week and a topic they want to dig into. 
and um, give them a chance to have that experience. And maybe I'm not the right coach for them, or maybe I am, who knows. Um, but at least they have that experience and, and maybe they want to move on with, uh, with actually finding and, and hiring a coach. That's something that we should talk about in, in a future show because I, I don't do that. I don't do any uh, free sessions with people, but I know many, many coaches that do. They offer that as a way to, uh, to, get, to, know, uh, to get to know the coach. So that can certainly be uh, a topic upcoming. So, Adam, David, thanks for uh, being on the Blab Show today, Lead with Giants Coaching Mastermind. Hope you can come back. We're going to be doing this the second and third Thursdays at noon uh, Central Time. Have no idea what time it is where you guys are. What time is it there, Adam? Uh, we're at 10.45 a.m., so I'm two hours in the past. Okay. We are Pacific Time. All right. Well, good to be in the future. Good to be in the past uh, sometimes. Thanks, everyone, for uh, coming into the room and joining us. Uh, hope that you will come back. Last thing, David, how can people contact you? Adam, how can they contact you? And I'll do the same. Uh, CoachDJGreer.com. So that's David James Greer, uh, CoachDavidJamesGreer.com. Uh, my website's EvergrowthCoaching.com. You can see my Twitter handle just up above my head there in the blab thing, which is at EvergrowthAdam. And uh, it can be emailed at Adam at EvergrowthCoaching.com. Thanks, Adam. I'm Dan Forbes, leadwithgiantscoaching.com. I see we had a late question come in there. Unfortunately, uh, no time today, but we will talk about that in a future show. So uh, please follow me here on Blab, and you'll see when those shows are announced. Thanks, everyone, also who is part of the Lead with Giants community.